Hi, I'm Patrick from Free Fin Cal, and today let's take a look at Tata Mid Cap Growth Fund. I was looking at the mid cap uh, uh, listing at Value Research, and I found that this was a five star rated fund, and the fund was as old as 1994, and but had only about uh, less than 800 crores of AUM. Uh, I was intrigued by that, and I thought I will dig deeper into it, and hence this review. Uh, it uh, Again, when uh, when you review a mutual fund, you learn so much more, not only about the fund, but also about star ratings, again, how useless they are, and also about how difficult it is to even get fund fact sheets and also dig into the history of a mutual fund. I, I mean, just by sheer luck, I found the information about this fund. So let's take a look at this. So this was, this is now called a uh, uh, Tata mid cap growth fund essentially it says that it will invest in growth oriented mid cap stocks uh, It does not have much of a history although it's been since available since 1994. Uh, it started as a closed ended fund uh, but uh, um, Because it's changed so much you can't really talk about past performance and yet another reason that investors should not blindly look at returns and uh, uh, Focus on that and focus on star ratings so if you do a uh, you know casual search and if you do a casual uh, look at the latest fund fact sheet and as on November 22nd, 2019, this is among the top 10 of the mid cap category in the last one year, three year, five year and 10 years. And uh, it in over just the last year, it has bet the BSE mid cap uh, total returns index by more than 10% without any drop in mid cap allocation. So that mm, that's interesting. And if you look at the fund fact sheet as on October 31st, 2019, a three-year SIP in the Tata Midcap Growth Fund would have earned 5.5%. This is this looks small, but uh, the similar SIP in the Nifty Midcap 100 would have just got you minus 2.3, 2.2%, minus 2.2%, which is very impressive. And over one year, the SIP uh, in this fund would have got 11.7% and the uh, Nifty Midcap 100 just about minus 1.3%. So those are good numbers. But then you have to look deeper into the history of the fund. Uh, was it really a mid cap fund in the past? Was it something different and so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to do. The fund was launched in June 1994. Uh, as I said, it has only 747 crores as of now. Uh, uh, Tata AMC's most popular fund is the Tata Equity PE fund. And that's got a five times more A1 than that. So mm, why is that? Why is that a, a mid cap fund? Especially because we have we have seen um, a nice you know, growth in mid cap and small cap indices, but yet this fund has got a low AUM, which is kind of strange. Of course, we'll never know the exact reason for it, but we just need to dig deeper. Now, this fund has got an amusing history. This was actually launched in 1994 as a closed ended fund by Indian Bank Mutual Fund. Then it closed down. It was called in Navaratna. Then Tata AMC took over that fund in 2001 November and they, it became Tata in Navaratna fund. Then uh, in uh, on 31st March 2004, that is uh, after 10 years, the fund became open-ended and when it became open-ended, Tata called it the Tata Growth Fund. And from November 2012, the Tata Growth Fund was called Tata Midcap Growth Fund and prior to that in February 2012 uh, uh, Tata AMC took the took its Midcap Fund, its Capital Builder Fund and merged the AUM with the Tata Growth Fund. You can see that event in the AUM trend below. So it's a very colorful history and uh, we need to look at the NAV growth and if you look at the NAV growth here this is from 1st January 2013 excuse me this is from 1st January 2013 here the uh, uh sorry about the uh, colors and the background the green is the nifty 100 index the blue is the tata midcap growth fund and the red is the nifty midcap 100 fund notice that until about uh, early 2014 or so the tata midcap the blue line and the green line tata midcap which is the blue line and the nifty 100 which is the green line are more or less together which is which means that the Tata growth fund before that was essentially like a large cap kind of fund and then it zoomed up which means that it took on more of mid caps and large caps. In those days there was no such regulation on what is a mid cap, what is a large cap so the fund managers could do whatever they please and uh, and then the AOM zoomed up. But then if you look at the uh, performance since uh, 1st uh, January 2013 
again the blue is the fund uh, the red is the nifty mid cap 100 and the green is the nifty 100 you can see that the fund has done well since it has changed into a uh, small cap mid cap kind of fund so that uh, that is a good sign that's a good but we need still need to look at its market cap history and if you look at the market cap history um there was a uh, uh, what happened was after may 2018 it became a proper mid cap fund as per the SEBI regulations so somewhere around the, this region but before that you can see that the large cap which is the gray color uh, was uh, dominating and the mid cap is the orange and the blue is the large cap the yellow is a cap bonds cash something like that so it was a dominantly small cap fund of, uh, from about 2014, I would say, to uh, May 2018. Then it became a mid cap fund. Of course, it, it dropped down its mid cap, small cap allocation, sorry, it dropped down its small cap allocation, increased its mid cap allocation. So it was able to, um, uh, in spite of that, it was able to, you know, um, uh, not fall as much as the mid cap uh, index and it did well. And I think it, it, the records that I just talked about, is fairly well but the fact is that the fund had changed character post may 2008 and today value research calls it a five star fund there is absolutely no justification for that because it is not a mid it was not a mid cap fund for five years it was not a mid cap fund for even three years so that is the reason why i keep saying look at the don't look at past performance look at the fund history first then look at the past performance star ratings are bullshit it is just for lazy fools don't follow star rating okay so this is the aom trend i talked about a merger and that's the merger happening here but the, and then it was more or less steady and then after the in all the cases only after the market moves up the aom increases people start investing at the wrong time in equity and then they will cry no returns no returns this is stupid they should they should invest when the markets have fallen down and and continue investing all at all times at the, at the very bare at the very least which they don't do so uh it's i still don't know why amc has not pushed if this happens i mean sometimes what happens is um amc's tend not to push certain funds and uh, uh maybe because they thought it was uh, uh, I mean, it was not their own child, it was adopted and so on. Uh, I don't know. So for some reason, they do that. I have seen that happen in ICICI Blue Chip and ICICI Top 100. ICICI Top 100, uh, when it was, a, I, do, I think it's still, a, I think it's a, uh, I don't know if it's a large cap fund, still, I forget, but when it was a large cap fund, it was an awesome fund. It was actually a better fund, in my opinion, than ICICI Blue Chip. But if you notice, the AMC themselves showcased blue chip more and got a more more money via distributors from that than for ICICI Top uh, 100, which was actually a Shankar and Narayan fund, I think, at that time. ICICI blue chip is not, as far as my memory serves. So if you're okay with a, a low uh, low AUM uh, mid cap fund, which a decent record, but a very short but decent record. This could be a pick. I mean, you. I mean, it's a kind of a dark horse kind of pick. You don't know how it will behave, but AOM can increase suddenly. But if you're okay with that, you can uh, invest in this. Uh, and if you're already invested, you can um, continue investing as long as this performance is satisfactory. So that's an offbeat kind of mid-cap fund, but it's a decent performer, I would say. So thank you for watching. I'll catch you again later. Bye bye.